let's use a pick for this one. Let's use a pick for this one. This is, um, let me show you this. <laughs> this is kind of a cool old shirt. I just have to, uh, I just have to represent. Yeah, it's an original, you know, it's one of those that came before. <laughs> different ways to do this song. So today we're breaking down Friend of the Devil Bay uh, by, what's the name of that band? This is definitely an American beauty. So let's not, you know, let's just approach it with ease and let's approach it from a point where um, we could play just, you know, G, D, D minor, D, D, and then C. G with B in the bass, and then A minor, and then D. It sounds a little busy for me for that kind of song. You know, maybe it's more like a... Maybe there's some kind of strum pattern that we talk about. If you want to do the, you know, if you know the song, you know it really well. It's like a, uh, you know, a nursery rhyme. You know it just like you could use um, Mary Had a Little Lamb to improvise your way through uh, through a multi million dollar real estate transaction if you had to, I'm sure. But it's, it's more like a, uh, one of those things that we build foundations upon. So uh, a vehicle and from which we can, through which we can travel um, across the universe, right? So there's this really cool... chord pattern, there's a G, and then a D with B in the, uh, a D chord, D at six nine, maybe horse with, think horse with no name with an F sharp in the bass, then an E minor, and then a D. We're moving to D because if we could descend more further than the low E string, we'd be descending to D minor or D major. And then C, we're just kind of going down. So let's take a look at it from this perspective. Think willing, you know. So we're just descending the scale pattern, basically. From G to F sharp, G major pattern, right? D, C, B, A, G. Okay, good. So we have that right there. meet a new section of the song and let's introduce the D chord again and then A minor or A minor 7. A minor 7 is a great one for this because it sort of opens it up to all kinds of really cool stuff right and let's again let's say that we're using this let's just for a minute um, and we haven't even really gotten to the full intro yet. We're really going to take a look at dissecting the intro. But we're starting with, because that's really kind of the money the money shot. The G chord, you know, the verse, and then this little break section, the B section, they're great because we can use these as opportunities to get our, our internal rhythmic process. You notice we're not with the metronome today. That's, on, that's by design. I wouldn't encourage this often, but I want to focus this less this session on things other than the metronome. I want to really focus this on things other than time passing by. I just want to be observant of our own sort of inner workings. And so let's get back to that D chord. I mean, we could just be, you know, I, I typically play this. I'm really, really sloppy when it comes 
comes to playing through this part of the song. So, da 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 Let's see. Set up. Okay, so we have that really cool just D chord. We could strum it in quarter notes. And then we could open it up on the A minor 7 and then go right back to quarter notes. It just really all depends. It depends largely on how we want to accompany the vocal pattern the vocal um, melody and the vocal presentation. So we're just going to work on just really clear, you know, basically boom chick, boom chick, two, three, four, da 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 And you can really start exploring with where you would prefer to have your pick. Do you want your pick over here just sort of like lightly being held so it sort of slaps against the strings and it creates a really nice bright percussive sound, you know? Or you could just kind of work on down up 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 one two three four one all right so we could do that we could also just work on reverse roll let's hear what it sounds like with a little vocal on over the top a little melody so hear my my pick scraping over this the wound string so these are the things that we want to take care of and that can all be overcome with just changing the angle of the pick so if we have it um, angled forward we scrape across the string backward. We scrape scrape across the string, but if we address the string in a pair with its in its parallel um, form, then we can zip right through that string without upsetting that that winding. You know, um, sometimes you might want it, and others other times you may not. So if we take our way, you know, slowly through these sections of the song. We get this. We get this really um, great opportunity to expand our understanding about the song, you know. And this works with any song we approach, you know. So let's just zip back into the intro, you know, because we've got this. Da 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 we'll use that intro between each verse and for our purposes for this session now 
Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just using that descending pattern, that scalar pattern, just descending right through G major. Let's take a look at that first. We've got this really cool scale that we're descending using G. Or we could use open G, right? But we want we want that, you know, that blazing hot sort of like slurring into the G, which we're doubling, right? That same G. Uh, so we want to have our fourth finger available for now. You know, later on it'll be finger three or finger two, depending on what we're asking, right? But let's take a look at three. We have, or four, we have uh, G. We have F sharp, E, open D, C, A, uh, B, I guess, on the A string, and then open A, and then G. So here's the here's that lick, lick again. Uh, we have G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G. And then all I'm doing now, I could use, let's just, be, before we really start to ver provide variations on this, or, you know, conceive of variations, let's take a look at that down. We're looking at just a down stroke. I'm gonna give you a second to catch up. I'm on fret five on the D string with the bass note and then the open G and the fret three on the B string. So we're playing G, G, and D. So if you if you heard that, you know, note twice, that's correct because, you know, we're doubling it. We're doubling that G string. So we're thinking bass note, again, it's that boom chick that will continue to appear across our um, the operative years of our guitar practice together, you know, and apart. So we have that boom chick, boom chick, boom chick. And then we're descending from there. So we're doing the boom chick on each bass note. And I'm trying like mad to keep that all nice and even with that's hard to do with a pick for me you know sometimes I feel like you know whoops oh geez slipping all over the place but there's a lot of there's a lot of breathing that goes in that you know is employed in controlling guitar tone like breath is the first thing right it's how it all began so that's how this begins separate lap bass note line to be separate descending bass pattern to be separated from the chord stab great song to provide, you know, um, a research, like a sandbox for us to really explore lead-ins and lead-outs. You know, we're leading into and we're leading away from a chord. So this is a perfect song for that. This is a great place because we sit almost in the sort of G, this G trance, you know, we've got this... I could listen to that as a listener all day almost, you know? You know, not really, but if it's performed well, I could listen to it for a spell. So, da da da, da 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 da, and then I hear some melody come in. Da 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 da. And then we've got these little opportunities. I know where one is going to be, so I need to just figure out how I can literally approach chromatically. And I have one, two, three, four, five notes to the one. So let's use an irregular pattern. So where do we have four and, right? That's the end of four. And then we have four. Then we have the end of three, then three, and then the end of two. So one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, two, and three, and four, two, and three, and four, and one, right? Two, and three, and four. 
two, two, and three, and four, and one. So we could start that pickup with uh, on the end of two, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Something like, you know, there's there are all these little chords that we can play that that kind of get us there and back again. So let's take a look at what happens if we use this, um, you know, do this descending pattern, this bass line pattern for the intro across, you know, just on one, the span of one string. So I'm on the D string here and I'm favoring the D string in this particular application. So I'm favoring that application because there's a brighter sound on the D string than on the A string on fret 10. Same note, different timbre, a little bit different, but it's, um, we can do the same thing here. And that's a completely different opportunity because now we've got, you know, between the G note and then the, uh, open, we can use the open D, open G, we've got two notes plus a higher note and instead of, you know, that D note on the top of that pattern. That static, we have these really, this really cool tenth, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or one, two, three, an octave higher, um, so we've got this tenth above that descends in parallel with us, right? With the bass line, uh, I'm including us in the, the bass line. Uh, so we've got this, um, you know, 10, nine, which is, you know, basically would be F sharp minor seven flat five in, in the key, right? So we've got G, F sharp, but we're using the open strings. We want that, you know, the opportunity to really strum through this, right? You know, later in the song, we might decide to really come alive here. to do is create contrast between sections so that you know we can keep ourselves entertained and then when we do when we do play this for an audience we can keep them entertained too you know that's a really important part so if you have any other ideas about where to go with a song just let me know in the comments below and then just kind of share your thoughts with all of us because we're paying attention and you know like share subscribe watch other videos that we have and all that obligatory stuff Boy, I sure do appreciate you coming back, you know, time and again, though, to kind of hang out with us. Um, I guess if you wanted to stick around for another second, we could talk about uh, just while we're here. I mean, we did talk about using this song as a as a vehicle. So, you know, some of us are stick around. But if you're sticking around still, this is definitely for you. So we could start by we have, you know, G, 
you know, D with F sharp in the bass. We have E minor, we have D, we have C, and then B minor, A minor, and then D. So we have all of these chords. And then what we typically would do as a jazz musician, or any melodic musician for that matter, where, whether we're ripping country guitar or playing sort of like fused out country, like dead style country, um, or whether we're blazing our bluegrassy fingers right into, uh, you know, like um, callous land. Uh, I mean, we've got single notes that we can use to solo through those changes. So we have all of those chords, and then what I'm saying is we have a chord has a scale for each change, right? So we have a scale for G major, which definitely works for all of this chord progression. Also, we have the, you know, the one, three, five arpeggio. So we have two, you know, G, B, D, and then we have that really cool, you know, pattern that occurs every octave, one, three, five. And then we shift the middle finger to the other octave, the octave again, middle finger to the octave again, the, uh, my middle finger is on G each time, right? G, B, D, G, B, D, and then G, B, D, right? And then we have another G up here that we could grab. And then, uh, so we have that. We have D with F sharp in the bass, so we have this D with F sharp, A, and then D. So we're gonna use basically the same one, three, five, but in a different configuration. So we have F sharp, A, and then this is special situation right here because, because there really is like a, uh, you know, a finger roll happening here. So that's something that we wanna just talk about Briefly, we won't spend a whole lot of time on it. We could specialize on this in our own time. I'll just give you the mechanics that you need to play it and execute it in a clean manner, right? So, so we have one, finger one, and then finger two. Tip most part of the, or finger four. Um, uh, tip most part of the fourth finger, right? It's right on the point of the finger tip, and it, it will feel uncomfortable if we're not used to this kind of thing. We don't really want to slide it underneath the fingernail because that's not really serving the purpose, but there's that sweet spot just let me just make an imprint here in my finger where it goes and then I'll show you here. Okay, that's where we want it. We have that finger roll rolling up to, so if I use only a little bit of my, just right on the tip of my finger, that gives me enough finger to lay over and then capture that fifth fret on the A string whilst choking out the previously fretted low E string, right? So we're hearing a single note roll instead of, you know, two notes ringing at a time. It's okay if we want to, to do that. You know, I love that. But, you know, it doesn't really, it's not what I want all the time. It's, I'm sure it's not what you want all the time. So we have that D with the F sharp, and then we use F sharp an octave higher, do the same pattern with that fourth finger roll, and then F sharp, A, and then D. So we're following the changes. And then D with F sharp in the bass. And then E minor is like. That, you know, open three, two, and then fret two, and then finger one, four, and then three. So this is the minor shape. And then we use, we find an E minor root every time. And then we have that one flat three five pattern that we can iterate across the universe here of guitar fretboard them. And then D, we could use D like this. We'd have to, you know, kind of get way up here to do that. But that's cool. Um, let's take a look at this D right here. So let's, oh, we already did D major, right? So we have that underneath our fingertips already. And then we have C. We didn't really, really do C yet, so we can do C with G in the bass. Another finger roll, but this time with finger number one. Roll up to A string fret three, and then stretch that fourth finger up there to fret number seven, right, on the A string. So G, C, and then E, right, and then we have a G, C, and then E again, and then we have the same G, C, and E. And remember, if you're sticking around, we're building these, we're using these tools so that we can build and expand our song that we could play for years.
for years, right? And we can really just start figuring out how to how to insert that stuff and improvise our way into new situations and out of new situations. So that C is good. We have that. We have G with the B in the bass because we have, you know, we had one, two, the G chord already figured out. Now we have the A minor that we need to deal with, which is the same thing that we did for E minors, you know. But this time we're starting on fret number five on the low E string. So one, four, three, and then we use that A again. A, C, E, A, C, E, A, C, E. And then we have another A up here that we can just, you know, grab pretty easily if you want. And then I think that's it. You know, that's it for chords that we... You know, we have all of the, that space to kind of get back to the, you know, the descending pattern for the intro lick that, you know, basically separates the verses, sections of the song. kind of use chromaticism anywhere you want. Just let's be sure that we're really focusing on where we are rhythmically on one, two, three, or four, or anywhere in between, you know, with, um, but just if we can keep a sort of an observation of where we are in the continuum once we start it, we can basically do, learn to do anything with songs like this, you know, they're great. And I really do appreciate you sticking around this long and, uh, um, okay. That's about it for today. If you have other questions, uh, you know, you know what to do. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again soon. Yeah, it's some good stuff. <laughs>